This is Control Structure, episode 148 for September 25th, 2018. This show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash cs148 to see them. I'm your host, Stephen Orvis, and with me is the other host, Andrew Bailey. Hi, Andrew. I'm stuck in the establishment. The establishment of what? Oh, you're making up for Chris not being here. Yeah, essentially. Oh, okay. So, yeah, there was, like, some scheduling issues. He might have been here. He was kind of close. Scheduling or communication? Maybe a little bit of both. Okay. I mean, he's like, oh, I'm going to be in Bethel Park tomorrow. Uh, Are you going, you know, what are you doing after work? So, it's like, oh, Bethel Park, maybe you can stop by your parents and pick up all the stuff that you still have over there. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe he did that. Maybe he didn't. Maybe. So, uh, yeah, it's been a month. We got quite a bit of articles. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, quite a big chunk of articles. So, let's start. So, you know AMP? That's the one you told me that wrecked the load times on your blog. Yes. Uh, it's supposed to, like, make everything faster, but it didn't make everything faster for me. Uh, apparently, they have quite a bit of suggestions or something because the whole project has grown quite a bit that managing this herd of cats has become kind of a problem so it's the governance model is going to be moved slightly more outside of Google now hmm. so mm, who knows what's going to happen with this you know one of it's kind of too many fingers in the pie situation yeah just like make it someone else's pie yeah So, speaking about Google, um, you know Google Chrome? Yes, I use Chromium. Good. But people have been starting to get angry over Chrome 69. Uh, It does a few things, or at least did a few things. Uh, One of them was uh, hiding certain subdomains from the domain name and the address, uh, which annoyed a lot of people, and for good reason. in that, you know, there is a difference between website.com and www.website.com or m.website.com in that, you know, if these subdomains are hidden, you don't know where you're actually at or where you're Mm -hmm. going or anything. Um, So this was kind of quickly moved back, uh, at least rolled back anyways. Um, So the... This was done based upon the, perhaps, assumption that people are confused by domain names and URLs, and somehow making them shorter, they thought maybe this problem would go away. But, I mean, in my experience, people don't really have a problem typing in three W's or anything. That was ingrained in the culture. It's www.something-something-something. Again, that's www. <laughs> or HTTP colon oh. <laughs> two forward slashes. <laughs> that sounds like a super old commercial. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it looks like Google has uh, this war on URLs going on. And this was this uh, Wired article was published like days before this happened. Oh, that's funny. So, you know, everyone's pointing to this article that is like, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Google wants to kill the URL. Well, what are they going to replace it with? You know, something that looks like a URL? You know, like, people who are confused by URLs typically don't use them. They're not looking for them. It doesn't really make their experience much worse, I think. Right? Uh, Typically, those people are just confused in general. Um... I can see we're having a uh, place to show the top level of domain name could be a good thing, but I think dropping the URL overall is bad because it still does strip away information they should be learning. Yeah. They can't learn it if it's not there. And like that whole box is also a very good search bar, mm-hmm. uh, as is demonstrated by pretty much every browser out there. And for rest full resources if you're doing a good job at rest you can predict where things are at and it makes sense the other thing people are angry about chrome is the forced login thing um 
Now, I'm not a very heavy Chrome user. Apparently, you can log into your Google account in, like, Chrome itself, like the browser. Like your browser sync, kind of like Firefox has its sync mode, and you can let them store your stuff for you. Yeah. So, apparently, there is also some confusion that, you know, if you log into, say, Gmail within your Chrome, it would not log into... uh, that account in Chrome itself, but apparently this has changed in that logging you into one logs you into the other, despite like not having your Chrome logged into anything. Well, now it's logged in, uh, so people are kind of concerned that you know suddenly their uh, bookmarks will be synced away onto Google servers, and like there's this whole privacy. Uh, issue going on, uh, privacy concerns going on. Uh, apparently, sometimes it can also sync your cookies uh, to uh, Google as well. All the tasty cookies. Mm. So, uh, let's see, I think this is another change recently in Chrome, but uh, more uh, poignantly in this article. Uh, about the new iOS is that you know all those extended validation certificates uh, there's apparently a few kinds of uh, HTTPS certificates going around Uh, our favorite Let's Encrypt does the domain validation uh, which essentially verifies that you own this domain extended validation uh, is a little bit more costly and time consuming in that, you know, it actually goes through and provides evidence that it's like, okay, this is, you know, a real business that is in operation and everything like that. Uh, And uh, for all that cost and time and everything, you get this green text at the, uh, you know, in your URL bar that says like, oh yeah, like whatever company name incorporated. For, for some browsers, Firefox specifically. Yes. But not many. Uh, and uh, for an increasingly less uh, uh, number of browsers, uh, they've been dropping this because mm, I have no idea why. But, you know, it, this is kind of removing the advantages that are touted uh, for these extended validation certificates. The thing I noticed when he kind of pointed out in the article is... So many sites don't use it that when you go to a site, I think Newegg may have been one of the ones that would have it. Uh, you go to them and oh, cool. Yeah, I know this is the right Newegg. But <laughs> the other side of it is when you, like eBay was one of the ones I mentioned, doesn't have it. So it's like you go to eBay and I still use eBay anyways, even though it doesn't have the, the green thingy on it. Right. Just because, well, they don't use it. And you don't necessarily notice if Newegg's disappear. You don't notice. Kind of like how he pointed out. He turned it off on his site, and no one noticed. So it's like, yeah. no one's actually looking. So, and then this uh, certificate authority or, you know, redistributor or whatever uh, has this email newsletter that shows a screenshot of, you know, an example with, you know, the green address bar. Mm. Uh, thing is... Is that IE, like, 6 or something? IE 8. 8, okay. So then he's like, well, what's what's it like now? What's it like now? It's Let's Encrypt now. (laughs) So they don't have that fancy certificate anymore. And they didn't pay any money for it. So, uh, you know, then he goes on to... This is the same guy that does the Have I Been Pwned Mm -hmm. site. So, yeah. It's dead. But Twitter apparently still has theirs. Oh, okay. See, he was talking on the article. He said Twitter was kind of back and forth. That sometimes they did, sometimes they did It depends on where you're at. Oh, this regional. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I believe Troy Hunt is in Australia. Oh. So, and, you know, again, I'm, I'd imagine that Twitter has, uh, you know, like a, was a CDN. So, like, they have, like, hundreds of servers everywhere mm-hmm. that are technically Twitter.com. So uh, okay. Uh, so, speaking about encryption, uh, there's... You know, so, okay, you got your certificate, so everything's encrypted. Not really. So when 
your browser makes a request, it sends along something called server name indicator, which pretty much has to be clear text to, you know, ask the server, I want this domain uh, on you and not some other one. That's sent in the clear. But uh, now that's starting to change. There's a uh, draft specification out there that uh, is a, provides a way to encrypt that. So now everything can be encrypted and you can just, you know, be happy and not uh, pay attention to anyone who might be looking at you. Um, let's see, it only works, uh, I think, uh, Cloudflare. It only works between Cloudflare and, like, uh, some beta version of Firefox right now. Mm. Goodbye, NSA. Goodbye, NSA. <laughs> and, of course, you know, the EFS is uh, excited about this as well. So, you know how I am about uh, PC. I'm really big on PC. Yeah, definitely. You've got that old 20th century sitting there ready to play games on and, mm -hmm. and everything. And... So, uh, this post-PC era, apparently it's not happening. Uh, so, when everyone took a look at, uh, like, the you know, usually marketers and salesmen, you know, took a look at, uh, you know, the uh, hot sales of... Uh, smartphones and tablets back in the day, like five years ago, you know, they were taking over the world, it looked like. Mm. So everyone's like, okay, yeah, like, this is like going to be the future. No one's going to use PCs anymore. Well, then everything kind of leveled off. And uh, it seemed like, you know, everyone who wants a tablet has one and not really too many other people are getting them. Uh, and like, everyone has a smartphone now. Uh, but people still use PCs and are not giving them up, which makes me very happy. Yeah. The interesting thing was, like, with my brother, he went through a phase for a while. He had his, uh, he had, like, an iPod for a while, he had the phone, then he had a tablet. He's like, I use my tablet more than the phone, and then now I see him more or less back to the computer again. <laughs> it is, like, the computer, it does give you the more screen space and stuff. So, it seems that, you know, tablets have found their niche... They're not taking over everything. Mm -hmm. uh, About the right tool for the job, not an end all. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. It points out that, uh, you know, tablets are popular among students and uh, certain uh, professionals uh, and construction workers. Mm -hmm. You know, things that, you know, situations. Set it down, pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. Situations where it's like, yeah, we need to have something out there that mm -hmm. is a little bit more convenient than a phone, but can't be a laptop or anything. Yeah. So, uh, speaking about PCs, let's talk about GIMP for a moment. Remember GIMP, the uh, image editor? Oh, yes. So, uh, they recently got a $100,000 donation, or rather, someone else got a four hundred thousand dollar donation and they're like okay gimp here let's share that's about enough for one developer for a year maybe <laughs> well depending on where they're at yeah so but that is probably more realistically that can give them a lot of resources if it's uh because they probably still get a lot of donation time yeah so let's take a step back and look at things from a high level like you know how fast computers have got over the past mm, 10, 20 years or so? Mm -hmm. Like, on the hardware level? But things don't feel any faster. Well, my phone's faster than the computer I had back in the early 90s, or late 90s. Okay, but is your phone now, like the one you have now, faster than the one you had before it? Oh, it... It is faster than that phone because that phone was not very good at all. <laughs> so, well, actually, no, I take it back. Two phones ago was not good. Okay. So, it seems that we've kind of leveled off, correct? You know, it just mm -hmm. seems that, you know, at some point, you know, it's kind of like the old adage that what Intel gives, Microsoft takes away. <laughs> because hardware gets faster. Yeah. And then the software slows it down again. Yeah. The thing I've been noticing, it used to be a big deal to have the quad core and the octa core phones, but that's kind of all tapered off too. It's there's no re new revolutionary phones coming out as much as there had been for a while. 
Mm, well, if you want to cheer up a little bit, just go take a look at what Apple did last week. Oh, well, I don't do Apple, so <laughs> I'm not even look at those. Uh, so this guy pretty much goes on a rant, you know, saying that, you know, Windows 10 takes 30 minutes to update when you could have installed it like five times uh, in that amount of time, uh, which I've... <laughs> I've sort of experienced. I don't think it was ten. Uh, I don't think it was thirty minutes last time. The Windows install is pretty fast of the modern one. Yeah, ten is a lot better than <laughs> like seven. A few hours or whatever it was. I was. I'm trying mm. to remember Windows ninety. I remember doing it and sitting there and sitting there waiting for it to install. Like it took quite a while. Yeah. Um, Windows XP slow too. So, you know, he points out that everything is huge, and he points out that the latest Android, uh, you know, system is almost six gigabytes. So, you know, he's like, you know, think about how big that is. Like, is there, like, a movie in here? <laughs> you know, how how many drivers <laughs> do you need to run a phone? A in there. Uh, and then, you know, as you pointed out, you know, the older versions of Windows took a long time. Uh, time to install. Windows 95 was 30 megabytes. Uh, today it took we have... a long time because I had to keep swapping the floppy drives out. Yes, the floppy disk, yeah. Uh, although, I guess it's like more of a modern floppy drive. You can read a floppy in like 20 seconds. Really? Yeah. That's not what I remember. I remember you stick it in and it's like... <laughs> and then it was about, you know... Couple minutes later, it's like read error. Can that read floppy disk? I'm like, no, I lost it. <laughs> now you gotta start all over. Uh, so yeah, thirty megabytes. We have web pages that are bigger than that. Windows 10 is four gigabytes, which is 133 times as big. But is it really 133 times better? I mean, functionally, they're almost the same. Sure, there's Cortana, but you know, does that really take 3,900 megabytes? But whatever Windows 10 is, is Android really 50% more? Which is really funny that it's bigger than Windows. You know, then he points out that, uh, you know, the Google Keyboard app is 150 megabytes. No, he doesn't say in here. What? Is that it, with Windows 10, I think Microsoft did do some slimming with Windows. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I think it was like yeah, Windows Seven was like almost ten gigs, oh, and I think was, and I think Vista was as well. Yeah. But you know, Microsoft you know smoked the tablet craze, and like mm -hmm. we need to make everything smaller. Yeah. So see, so really, ten has is going the direction that he's arguing for. Yeah. Um. So you know, he complains that you know there's obscenely huge phone apps. Mm -hmm. Uh. And then your desktop to-do app is probably written in Electron, thus has a user driver for a 360 controller in it. <laughs> it can render 3D graphics, play audio, and take f photos with your webcam. And then, you know, he complains about Slack, which is, you know, always, uh, you know, a punching bag that I think deserves it. Isn't Slack, doesn't it run, like, Chrome in the background or something, I think? One of the browsers, I forget which one. So, remember Electron there? Uh -huh. Electron is essentially Chrome. Oh, that's the Chrome, but under the hood Chrome. Okay. Yeah, but you can es it essentially has uh, like file and other kind of APIs mm -hmm. that you wouldn't get in Chrome. But since it's running as a desktop application, you know you can like make files and stuff. Yeah. Um. So you know Slack is a huge resource hog that is essentially just a chat room. Mm hmm. Uh, and then, of course, with, uh, you know, it complains about the, uh, the iPhone slowing down. Uh, an iPhone 4S was released with iOS 5. It can barely run iOS 9. Not because iOS 9 is that much superior. It's pretty much the same. But their new hardware is faster, so they make the software slower. Don't worry, you got exciting new capabilities like running the same things with the same speed. <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, goes on about uh, web apps that have problems with state consistency. 
Uh, like, you know, you open something up and you hope that no one else touches it while you have it open. Uh, uh, he uh, has a shout out to the Internet of Things or the Internet of Shit Twitter account, which I love. You know, it has like, you know, a random startups, uh, you know, product on there that completely fails in some way. What um, I thought was interesting was he had mentioned in there how it's consider it acceptable to tell users, oh, just reboot it, it'll be fine. Yeah. And, and people would just do it because they don't have a choice. Yeah, and basically ends with, you know, users have no choice. Uh, let's see, you say uh, every Android app takes 350 megabytes. Users will live with that. You can't give them smooth scrolling. Okay, they'll live with a phone that stutters. We say if it doesn't work, reboot. Well, they'll reboot. <laughs> After all, they have no choice. Um, so the latest thing that uh, the Internet of Shit is complaining about is a uh, Amazon event where they're unveiling Alexa-enabled clocks, microwave security systems, and lots of other things. <laughs> it's never been easier to fill your home with hidden oh, corporate microphones. Oh, I heard about a microwave. I didn't actually read about it. So, yeah. And then just to pile on... Uh, you know, someone saw that post uh, about, you know, everything, you know, being bloated and slow mm -hmm. and inefficient and pretty much just unloaded like his vacation of horror uh, where he used this uh, hotel booking management system built by someone with 10 plus years of experience in the field. And he showed up to the hotel and the receptionist is like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Like, you didn't reserve anything, which I've experienced stuff like that plenty of times. You know, like, you know, there's something on the internet, but it doesn't match up with reality. There's a disconnect. Mm. <laughs> so, and it looks like it, the same thing happened uh, on his train ride out. <laughs> but, uh, and then goes on to say that, uh, you know, like, there's all sorts of, you know, prepackaged large applications for specific tasks. You know, if you need to edit tables of numbers, you got Excel. If you need to write a document, that's Word. If you need to send data to another person, email, you know, so on and so forth, such that if you need just this little tiny feature in any one of them, you kind of need, need this huge, you know, package, which... Yeah, I can understand that. It's kind of frustrating to find something small that you that mm -hmm. you just need one thing. This got to say everything. Yeah. But hey, speaking about Windows 10, um, I'm not using Windows 10, by the way. Good for you. I am. Okay. <laughs> uh, but specifically the preview builds. Uh, I'm not running the preview build, uh, but in the previews of Windows 10 for the uh, next update. Uh, Microsoft is slash was uh, testing a little prompt that shows up whenever you try to install uh, Firefox or Chrome or something else and says, hey, try out Edge. The funny thing is these are probably the people most likely to eat Microsoft's uh, pushing stuff. If you're like running the latest and greatest of 10 and yeah. those people, the people that complain about it. <laughs> So, uh, sources uh, for this article uh, say that this particular message will not appear in the final October update. Um, we'll see about that. So, have you used Newegg recently? Uh, back in July. That's kind of dangerous. Um, I almost bought something off of Newegg last week, uh, but held off for something, for some un for something unknown, and I guess that must have been a premonition, because uh, last week, Newegg found a piece of code on their checkout page that would steal any credit card number that, you know, anyone put into the box. So basically, they called, they registered a domain name called netnewegstats.com and <laughs> sent the data there. Yeah. So Newegg Stats is apparently not affiliated with Newegg. So the thing is, then, because they did it through doing a post in the JSON, is their security scanning that they could have done had in place as part of a test for the pipeline? 
that would have looked for weird, not authorized requests going out to other places? <sighs> Probably not, because this is a, a JavaScript attack. Like, someone slipped this mm. code into the official Newegg billing page, uh, and then, like, this individual, you know, piece of script uh, would run on everyone's computers, like, client-side, not server-side. Yeah, but I'm saying, so, I'm going on the assumption that this happened in the source code. I'm just thinking that went through some more. So, could they have done scanning on the source code that could have helped them find it better? Who knows? Um, this this is apparently the mage cart assault or attack or whatever. Um, so which, they did it before, for which airline. yeah, which has pretty much happened one other time. So you know, since this is the second time, you know, maybe you know someone will come out with some kind of scanner that uh, you know looks for something like this. So who they do mouse up. So it's like as soon as you're done typing in the box, they steal it like that fast. Is that when it is? Uh, mouse up or touch end. Uh, so yeah, essentially when you're leaving the box or something. So they're not waiting for you to press, press submit. They're like as soon as you're as, as soon, soon as, as soon as you're out of there, we're gonna take it. Or or even or even worse. Uh, well, no, no, they don't bind to you know key down or anything. Uh, so they're not like you know. You know, have a live feed of you know people pressing, mm -hmm. you know, typing in their credit card number one by one. So, uh, yeah, this uh, was actually going on for about a month. So, yeah, whoever did this uh, has quite a bit of uh, uh, quite a bit of security num uh, security credit card numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, the skimmer became active around August fourteenth. And the skimmer was confirmed to be removed on September 18th. So, yeah, <laughs> dangerous stuff. So, um, that said, uh, I have this neat uh, extension here called U-Matrix, which essentially, you know, divides up the security uh, into, like, a few different mm -hmm. kinds of requests that could be made. Uh, one of them is a uh, XML HTTP request, which is essentially what this attack mm -hmm. is based on, and it's pretty good about blocking like third-party domains. So I wonder if this would have prevented it, even if I had ordered something. Yeah. For a human, a human would think it was legit, but for this, I could see how this tool would maybe pick up on that and stop it. Yeah. So Linux 4.19-RC4 was released. Mm, it seems like a, like a normal release, you know, with the normal patches and everything. But why is this release candidate notable? It, well, it seems that Mr. Torvalds has come to a revelation that he has not been that nice to people and has decided to take some time off. Uh, so he, you know, goes over the fact that, you know, you know, he swears at people over, like, the tiniest things. Uh, you know, let's see, I think he said that he's, like, uh, not emotionally empathetic uh, to people. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, sort of, like, similar with uh, how he, you know, took a while off to write Git, uh, you know, to, like, manage everything, that he thinks it's appropriate to, you know, step back now and, you know, just kind of, like, you know, gather his bearings a little bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of this comes as the kernel project has adopted a code of conduct which prohibits discrimination and harassment based on pretty much anything. Uh, people think that social justice warriors are taking over and are using this as a club to pretty much uh, exile people they disagree with. So, you know, one day someone might, uh, you know, wake up and find that they've been locked out of everything. Uh, and they look around and it's like, oh, it's like, oh, you did something like 10 or 15 years ago that, uh, you know, wasn't exactly that great. Like someone accused you of like raping them like 15 years ago and suddenly you're like this pariah. Um, but, uh, you know, what do you think about this? I think it's probably good that he's taking some time off if he, 
if he's seeing that that uh, anger coming in amongst all the people. So no, I, my thought was when when you reference Skit, I was like, oh, I wonder if he's gonna code anything in, the, in between time, because <laughs> maybe he'll come up with some clever idea and do something. Yeah, and uh, you know, he mentioned that you know he's a big fan of tools, which you know Git is definitely one of those. Yep. Uh, so Wait, maybe. So like, oh, yeah, actually, re- reference there. Okay. Yeah. So maybe he can get an email filter in place so that when he My sends an email with swears, they just won't send. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is very different from uh, when uh, Guido Van Rossum uh, left Python, uh, was it a month or two ago? Uh, like, he was just more or less ready for retirement, I guess, almost. Oh, okay. Well, maybe not permanent retirement, just more like, you know, some guy who hangs around that you can ask him for advice. Uh, so, you know, who knows what's going to happen with, uh, Torvalds. Maybe he will discover a love for, I don't know, underwater basket weaving or something. (laughs) But he does say that, you know, he definitely wants to keep building things, you know, in the future. So. That's interesting. Uh, let's see. We didn't really have uh, feedback on Reddit uh, this time. Although uh, someone did mistake the podcast title. Uh, uh, was it a yeah, rule from Alpha thing? Uh, as. Uh, you know, apparently a Minecraft mod or something. Ah, that's funny. Yeah, uh, Ian says that one of my students saw the title of this episode and thought it was a Minecraft thing. Apparently there's a Minecraft third-party client called Wolfram. Oh, there is some sort of a interaction with Minecraft in Wolfram Alpha. Really? I forget what what all it did. There is something with that. Oh, you could, you know, you could describe shapes and things. I think you could describe a shape with Wolfram Alpha, and then it would somehow build that in Minecraft for you. Huh. That's what it was. I don't know where I saw it was a while ago. Maybe okay. a month or something. So, yeah, if you uh, have some feedback, uh, go ahead and leave that on Reddit, and uh, I will probably get back with you. <laughs> and don't forget that today is International Backup Awareness Day, so back up all of your stuff. Your credit card numbers, your bloated software, the Windows 95 on floppy disks. Yes, because floppy disks over time decay. Definitely. So, um, I guess that's it for right now. I guess so. All right. Have a good one. You too.